Hey guys, what's up? Right here, I have the best graphics card that NVIDIA has ever released. And no, I'm not kidding. This thing is actually the freaking best. So let's open this thing up and see what I'm actually talking about here. That we have... This. Yes. This. It's so freaking cute! I love it. This is the best. There is no better graphics card than this. Period. End of story. And this is an RTX 3050. Asterix. Whilst I would love if NVIDIA trusted me or would ever email me back enough times to let me use early access RTX 3050s, sadly, that is not the case. But this card is the closest thing we have to a desktop 3050 at the moment, and I feel that this will be a great representation of hopefully what's to come if NVIDIA gets their head out of their ass. So, officially, this graphics card is known as the RTX A2006 GB. And underneath this adorably tiny, dual-slot, low-profile, blower-style cooler, we see the same GA106 GPU that is used in the RTX 3060, albeit it is slightly cut down, with just a few less cores, and also, unlike the RTX 3060, as mentioned, this graphics card only has 6 gigabytes of GDDR6. But there's actually a 12 gigabyte version that exists, but it's basically a mystery ghost card that Nvidia just released, so see it in a couple months. Now, I seriously wasn't kidding when I say that this thing is the freaking best graphics card ever because I love it. This thing performs similarly to an RTX 3060 at this size with zero external power needed. All of its power comes from the PCI Express slot, meaning that this card caps out at 75 watts power draw. I hope at this point you can see why I'm calling it an RTX 3050. But don't just take my word for it, let's peel off these stickers and do some performance testing. I've, I've waited to peel this. Oh, that's nice. Now that is truly a sexy graphics card. All right, let's quickly jump into the benchmarks to see what a theoretical RTX 3050 can do. Uh, actual side note, it would probably be, be more like a 3050 Ti, but you get the point. And as expected, it performs like a slightly cut down RTX 3060. In Rainbow Six Siege, we see very great performance for a graphics card that, again, no external power. As we get a nice 165 average FPS at 1080p maximum possible settings. This is definitely a 1080p gaming graphics card. And in competitive games like Rainbow Six Siege, we can definitely reach that 144 average FPS even at high settings in order to justify using a high refresh rate monitor. Now, this is the one game I did benchmark against my actual 3060, and the FPS is fairly similar, but obviously the 3060 performs slightly better, given that it's not a cut-down 3060, it's an actual 3060. But it's comparable to a point that makes me wonder if the power draw and VRAM bullfuckery of the 3060 was entirely necessary. Whilst NVIDIA's own Brian Del Rizzo assures me that the 12 gigs of VRAM on the 3060 was absolutely necessary for the benefit of gamers or whatever he said in this email, this 6 gigabyte card performs very similarly. And the same is true in Battlefield 2042, where at high settings, we are seeing 60 FPS average. Now we can get even more than that and probably reach over 100 FPS at low settings, but it is very impressive to me that we're running 60 FPS on high settings in this game. I mean, just look at those reflections. 
Now, a small disclaimer, I did have trouble recording on this graphics card. Unfortunately, as it is a professional graphics card and not a GTX GeForce card, it does not support NVIDIA Shadow Play or the full GeForce Experience suite of recording applications. So I had to use OBS, which has some weird issues with this graphics card's driver, causing some stutters and lowered FPS. In Rainbow Six Siege, the average was 165, but our gameplay does not show that, as we did lose about 10 to 15 FPS while recording. The same thing is true of Battlefield and any future games, even though I used the X264 encoder on my Ryzen 7 Pro. So just note, averages were taken outside of the recording gameplay. And if Rainbow Six Siege and Battlefield 2042 didn't paint a great picture of this graphics card, GTA 5 just continues this amazing little card's powerful run. At maximum possible settings, and I do mean maximum, as you can see by the pretty nice looking reflections for a, what is now almost a 10 year old game, we're getting above 60 FPS. And MSAA X8 will destroy most modern graphics cards even in this game, so it's very impressive that this thing, given its size and power draw, can manage 60 plus FPS at these settings. This thing will be an awesome ITX gaming PC graphics card. And with that, that's exactly what I plan to do with it. I have a plan to build a super tiny, probably one of the smallest ever, AAA gaming PC. I just have to wait until I get paid so I can afford to buy the case. Now the final thing we need to talk about is cost. I am praying that the RTX 3050 Ti does not cost as much as this card did. Although Nvidia recommends a retail price of roughly $400, uh, Nvidia is a bunch of bullshitters that know they're never going to sell that card for that low, so it's basically pointless to listen to them anymore. This card retails for a little over $600. I got it for $650 plus tax, so $700 at Micro Center, which I waited for two hours outside of to get one of the four they've ever had in stock at my local Micro Center. And whilst I believe this card is amazing, I don't think the performance stands up for $700 US dollars. Now, this is a professional card, so I understand the cost a little bit. But as long as the RTX 3050 and 3050 Ti desktop GPUs that come out aren't $700, I think they could be great options for the budget gamer so long as NVIDIA uses what's in here in their actual desktop cards for gamers and doesn't completely fuck it up like they've done with everything else recently. And a final note is the I.O. on this card consists of four mini display ports and that's it. It does come with four mini display port to display port adapters if you buy at least the PNY version which is the one I have. I'm getting fingerprints all over this thing. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue and it comes stock with the low profile bracket, but does come with a full height bracket, which looks very weird because half of it just has no I.O. on it. For the budget professional, or even the low profile gamer, the RTX A2000 is pretty sick. And that's why I believe it is the best graphics card ever. Because it's so freaking adorable! It is literally the size of Nvidia's old Tesla P4. Just dual slot. So with that, and that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed. Stay tuned for the build with featuring that graphics card in a super tiny, tiny enclosure. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.